I've been an iPhone user for the past 14 years, so here are my top 25 iOS tips from my simplest to my most advanced. This video is sponsored by Setapp, the all-access library with so many useful apps for your Mac. For any problem you face, a simple search in Setapp can find you the solution. Check out Setapp by using the link below. 25. If you find yourself constantly going back and forward between apps, a quicker way to do it is to just swipe left and right on the home bar. 24. If you typically have a number of home pages and you want to quickly navigate between them, you can just slide your finger on these three dots right here. 23. In the calculator app, you can actually swipe left to delete the last digit. 22. You all probably know that enabling Do Not Disturb will automatically silence all colors. Now, you can set it to only silence unknown colors, but the problem is that Do Not Disturb will also silence your notifications. However, if you go to settings, then iPhone, and then enable silence unknown colors, calls will be silenced even when you are not in Do Not Disturb mode. 21. You can zoom in and out with just one finger in maps. Simply double tap and hold, and then you can slide your finger up and down to zoom in and out. Perfect for when you're trying to navigate but your other hand is full. 20. If you've lost your Apple TV remote, you can actually use your iPhone instead. Just go to settings, then control center, and then simply add the Apple TV remote to your controls. Then tap the icon to get a full Apple TV remote controls directly on your iPhone. 19. If you want to quickly scan a document and turn it into a PDF, uh, go to the notes app, press the camera button, and then tap scan documents. This will scan, crop, and convert the document into a PDF, which you'll then be able to share. 18. If you use your iPhone at night, and you always thought that it was way too bright, even on the lowest level, you can actually drop the brightness to a much lower level. Just go to Settings, Accessibility, Display and Text Size, and enable Reduce White Points. Your eyes will thank you later. 17. If you have a home screen with more sensitive information and you want to hide it, you actually can. Simply enter Jiggle Mode and then tap on these dots right here, then you can check and uncheck home screen pages to hide them. 16. If you've been used to moving apps one by one, there's actually a much better way to do it. Simply enter Jiggle Mode, hold on an app, and then slightly move it around, and then you can tap on more apps with the other hand to move them all together. Perfect for populating a home screen or a new folder. 15. If you like using Siri but you often find yourself unable to talk to her in public, you can actually type to her. Simply go to Settings and Accessibility, then Siri and enable tap to Siri. You can still use the Hey Cindy command to invoke her by voice, but when you hold the side button, the text box will show up and you'll be able to chat with her by text too. Okay, so if you're on a Mac and you're struggling with productivity, our sponsor Setapp could help you. Setapp is an app that we all use throughout the office and for good reason, as it provides useful tools to solve a lot of workflow frustrations. An app like Hazover is great for helping you focus on one program at a time, such as when I need to finish a thumbnail in Photoshop without thinking of my other tasks. When it comes to managing multiple windows, Mosaic is a great app to organize them exactly how you'd like, with multiple layouts available. I've mentioned apps like Isted Menus, Bartender, and OneSwitch before, and they all remain useful to this day. With more and more apps every day to help you make your Mac the best it can be, Setup is absolutely worth giving a try. Get a 14-day trial as part of Setup's 10 weeks of productivity celebration, which you can check out in the link below. 14. I always found typing on an iPhone to be quite difficult because of the lack of haptic feedback. Well, there's actually a way to enable it. You simply download Google's Gboard app, which will replace your default keyboard with Google's own version, which does support haptic feedback. And trust me, it will make typing on an iPhone a million times better. 13. If you're like me and you often type in multiple languages, Google's keyboard is once again the best choice here, as it will automatically detect the language and even switch mid-sentence. 12. This is a pretty big one. If you have someone elderly in your family who needs a hearing aid, one of the best ones is actually a pair of AirPods. Then go to Settings and Control Center and simply add the hearing control. The AirPods will now play real-time audio from your iPhone's microphone, which means that you can talk in your iPhone and then adjust the volume of your AirPods until your grandpa can hear you. 11. Most apps today require two-factor authentication, but no need to download a separate app anymore as we now have a built-in one in iOS. Simply go to Settings, Password, select an account, and then you can set up a verification code straight from there. 10. There's actually an easier way to copy and paste items. Let's say that you're writing a message and you want to send an image from an article. You can simply hold on the image in the article and then swipe on a home bar to go back to messages and drag it there. 9. Let's say that you have a magazine
person in front of you and you want to send a quote to your friend. Now, you could just send them the entire photo, but there's a better way to do it. Just open the camera app and tap on this button right here. This will analyze all text in the image, allowing you to copy it and then paste it to another app. Super useful. Eight, you know how some older Android phones had that LED light for notifications? Well, you can enable this on the iPhone too. Kinda. If you go to settings, accessibility, audio and visual, you can enable the LED flash for alerts. So whenever you get notifications, the flash would flash. Seven, in that same audio visuals tab, you can enable background sounds. Once enabled, your iPhone would play some calming sounds to help you focus better. And you can select between a couple of them, from rain and ocean to even white noise. Six, accessing background sounds takes a lot of steps, but there's actually a secret menu on your iPhone that you can enable and you can add some custom controls to it. To activate it, go to accessibility and from accessibility shortcuts, you can select a number of useful controls like background sound and the reduced white point that I mentioned before. And once you triple tap the power button, these will show up. Five, have you ever handed your iPhone to a kid to play a game and you were always worried about him exiting that game and messing up some other stuff on your iPhone? Well, there's actually a hidden kids mode. Simply go to settings, accessibility, and tap on guided access. Once you're in an app or a game and you triple tap the power button, you'll get the option to lock the user into that specific app using a custom passcode. Four, Apple still doesn't let you quickly launch the camera app, which is something that you can easily do on Android phones by usually double tapping the power button. Well, there is a way to enable that. Kinda. In accessibility settings and touch, you can enable a back tap. And you can set different actions which will activate by you double or triple tapping on the back. I've set mine to double tap to activate the camera and triple tap to activate the torch. And number three, Apple's most advanced app is something that most people don't even know about. It's called Shortcuts and you can download it from the App Store if you don't already have it. And it lets you create pretty much any type of automation that you can think of. For example, you can set an automation so that when your iPhone detects that it's at home, it automatically plays music for you, dims the lights, and automatically messages your friends to start a gaming session. At number two, did you guys know that you can actually have custom icons on your iPhone? This is fully done through the Shortcuts app and all you have to do is create a new shortcut to open up an app, give it a name, a custom icon which you can select from your own photos, and then add it to your home screen. And number one, this is actually my favorite. You can have dedicated home pages for work and for personal use that automatically switch based on where you are. To do this, you need to first create your two personal and work pages, then go to settings, focus, select personal, home screen, custom pages, and select which page you want your personal one to be. Then go back, tap on schedule, select location, and select your home. Whenever you get home, you'll only get shown the personal page with those personal apps that you've chosen. You can even mute work app notifications if you want. And then simply repeat the same process for the work page to have two completely separate home pages that automatically activate when you get home or when you get to the office. Oh, and we've also launched our new short channel. So if you want to see more iOS tips and more fun videos in a shorter format, definitely check it out. I'm Daniel, this is Zenof Tech, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Zenof Tech, signing out. Cheers. Yeah.